Professor Christy van der Vestesen of the Nelson Mandela University Center for the Advancement of Non-Racialism and Democracy, that's uh, CANRAD, says that the relatively peaceful political transition from apartheid to an inclusive democracy in 1994 was nothing short of genius. Now, the ability to transition from white minority rule uh, to a racially inclusive government was globally dubbed a miracle. And uh, Professor Van der Vestes now ever says that the global admiration that South Africa enjoyed as a country that could offer the world an alternative expression of a successful society has since deteriorated. Now, she further laments how the lack of meaningful distribution has also failed a constitutional democracy. So, as the country commemorates Freedom Day today, Professor Christy van der Vestesen joins us to reflect on 27 years of our journey. And with that, it's good morning to you, Professor. Welcome to Morning Live. Good morning. Very good to be with you this morning, Sakina, and, and with the viewers as well. You Happy know, Freedom Day. And to you, Professor, and, and, and I'm reminded, I, I just forget now um, who uh, the professor was, but there was a professor who asked a few years ago the question, um, you know, how much democracy and whose democracy are we actually celebrating? And, and, and we look at where we are today uh, from what we've just seen in Botsabelo, for example, um, uh, some of uh, the demands by that community 27 years into democracy, asking for the eradication of pit latrines, the eradication of the bucket system. Uh, these not just ideals for South Africa, but they've also been contained in um, other global treaties. So what are we celebrating today? Well, we are celebrating the fact that we have a very powerful constitution that does give us uh, the, the legal platform to demand these rights from the state. And what we've seen actually is, is that we have, uh, we have not uh, actualized the vision in, in our constitution. So, so what, uh, as, as you mentioned, as I've written in, in this article, the, um, uh, the, the level of, of redistribution of wealth has been way too, too low. We've only seen uh, what is called the de-rationalization of the upper echelons of our society. But if we look at it, um, the majority of people who are black who are still uh, are still living in poverty, and we also still have the highest socioeconomic inequality uh, in the world. This is according to official indexes, and uh, we've even uh, we've surpassed Brazil in that regard many years ago. And we have not uh, tackled this uh, sufficiently by any way. And of course, we know that the COVID nineteen pandemic has worsened things uh, massively, and we're now almost at fifty uh, percent. Unemployment, if, if you look at the expanded definition of unemployment. But the, um, the argument that I make is that a lot of people try to put the blame for this on our constitution and say it's the constitution that's failing us. While, in fact, the constitution does give us that platform on which we can say, not only claim uh, liberal, liberal values such as uh, the, the right to, to, uh, to freedom uh, and, and right to equality and, and those kinds of, of values. It actually gives us um, socioeconomic rights and entitlements as well, which makes our constitution very unusual in the world. And we also we have a big emphasis on human dignity in our constitution. And as we can see around us, we're really failing in actualizing that vision of human dignity for all South Africans. Mm. And, and, and I'm glad you, you, you started there because we do have a lot to be grateful for, um, especially as contained in our Bill of Rights. Uh, you look at other parts of the continent, for example, and then even traveling uh, across the world, uh, you come to a realization that we as South Africans really have a good thing going, but we also have to somehow um, accept that we as citizens perhaps have not exercised our agency as uh, pointedly and pertinently as perhaps we could, Professor Van der Vestesen? Yes, I think that there is unfortunately a, a quite a big expectation that, that government or political parties must step in. So we, we do not, in a sense, we don't claim the constitution as a living document of our own. The living, uh, the, the, the constitution is a, is a, um, is what one could call an a, a, a incredible act of, of political imagination, in which we said, in the 1990s to one another, we want to forge a completely 
a new and unified political community, um, as opposed to the divisions of apartheid and uh, colonialism. But we want to also do that on the basis of, of justice and of, of human dignity. And we have to hold our politicians to account to do that, because we see a failure of politics since the 1990s. So in a sense, we have not commanded um, from our, uh, or, or demanded from our polit politicians that they step up and provide uh, what we need as, as, as citizens. And we have also not sufficiently stepped in ourselves. But it, I do think that a lot of South Africans are surviving against incredible odds. So I do think that we, that we are, uh, it is actually incredible if you, if you look at, at the kinds of conditions under which people live. The, um, but we need to, to, to demand greater polit political accountability from our public representatives. Mm. Uh, but we are also a country that loves slogans, uh, you know, um, we are a country um, replete with uh, platitudes. And, and if you look at, as you yourself say, after uh, 1994, uh, the sort of terms that were used and associated with South Africa, like uh, the, the new, um, the rainbow nation, the new South Africa, and more recently, uh, the new dawn, you have to ask then, you know, how much is left of all of that enthusiasm uh, that evidently South Africans were dreaming about? Uh, the dream obviously has faded, as you point out, but how much of that 1994 miracle is still left? Well, the, the, um, I always think that the word miracle doesn't co really capture the kind of uh, sacrifices that were made, the, the incredible courage that was shown in forging the, the, dem the democracy that we have uh, today. And, and I do think that, that, uh, that this is something that we still share. We still want to, uh, all of us, have a prosperous democracy in which we are all treated with, with dignity. And that's something that we share as, as South Africans. And now the question is, how do we actualize that? Uh, so recently, also, we've, we've had uh, the launch of the Defend Our Democracy movement. That, for me, is, a, is another uh, sign of how we as South Africans want to come together across various lines of division and say, we, we can gather together on the basis of our, of our vision in our constitution and work together to actualize that vision. We have to take into account that because of this failure of politics, because of certain policies that we adopted, so uh, neoliberal policies that further entrenched inequality, we have not um, alleviated and, and eradicated poverty to the extent that we wanted to. And corruption over the past decade has seriously further undermined uh, our democratic project. So we do have a massive process uh, underway to try and at least break through the corruption and try to pull the, the heart out of, out of the system of corruption that we have. So that at least is happening. And we are seeing, obviously, hectic, uh, uh, to put it that way, contestations within the majority party also to try and bring the ANC back uh, on track with its original vision that it had for, for South Africa in the early 1990s. So these processes are underway. But as citizens, we also need to step up further and say we will not accept uh, uh, politicians who do not, uh, in the first place, serve the people. They must be in service to, to South Africans. And we're not seeing that uh, sufficiently. And that kind of accountability must be uh, claimed by us. Mm. So if we talk about uh, the lack of meaningful distribution of this country's resources uh, to its people uh, under democracy, how do we start addressing this issue in a meaningful way, Professor? Well, the, the thing is that we, we adopted uh, what's called neoliberal policies uh, from an economic point of view. We also have a lot of social democratic policies in the form of our social security system. But we have these neoliberal policies that we've adopted in terms of, of our economic system that have worldwide uh, been shown to exacerbate inequality. That's what neoliberal uh, capitalism does. It exacerbates inequality. So we need to revisit those policies and see how we can... Uh, uh, you know, use the state in different ways to to address probably our biggest problem, which which is unemployment. So that would be the first place uh, to start. And uh, and for that, uh, a number of people have spoken about the kind of economic kudesa. Uh, we uh, it, it makes sense for us as South Africans because we are actually very good at engaging with one another. It would, it would make sense for us to come together and forge a new uh, vision in terms of how do we eradicate 
this absolutely uh, extreme inequality and poverty that we have in our country? What are the kinds of economic policies that we need to put in place? Some of them are already in place, uh, but we but we need a. They obviously needs this. There needs to be a massive shift that has not happened, and and corruption, of course, which means corruption is a massive drain of resources. So resources that should be going towards the alleviation and, and the eradication of poverty, those resources are not reaching the right places. Uh, I live in uh, Keberga, and and I can I can tell you that around me I can see how resources are not going where they must be going in this city. So. We need to, that's the kind of thing that we, we absolutely, it's crucial for us that we need to, to, to stop uh, the corruption that, that's happening at all le levels of our government. So that's another very important step that must be taken at all levels. But of course, it's not just a single step. It's a massive process that involves many different uh, stakeholders and players. And as the public, we must also not collaborate or, uh, or become um, complicit in corruption. So we must also put our own foot down uh, collectively and individually against corruption. Mm. And in closing, uh, Professor van der Westrezen, uh, you also quote the concept of compromise and tolerance, um, which has been very much part of uh, our public discourse, maybe a lot more so at the beginning of this democracy than it is now, uh, where people were asking whether the agreements that were made and signed at CODESA were actually at the expense of the majority of South Africans. How do you respond to that? The the agreements, uh, they were uh, some of what I call sunset clauses that were uh, active in the period of, of the 1990s where the National Party uh, operatives, one could say, uh, in a sense, were, were treated with, with a, a certain level of compromise in order to ensure that we have a peaceful transition. But because we must remember that the most violent period of the, of the apartheid era was, was that first few years of the 1990s. So we were trying our best to prevent that we completely collapse in a state of bloody violence. So those certain compromises were made at the time around the National Party, uh, National Party leaders and so on. But ultimately, we, are, we have since then uh, the political uh, impetus uh, or the political initiative has been in our own hands. And, uh, and, and that is what we have to actualize now. To, uh, it, the problem is not the constitution, it's in fact how, how, what, what's the kind of politics that we are uh, seeing in our country and how do we make this democracy uh, uh, alive by claiming accountability from our, uh, from our politicians. Well, Professor Van der and thank you so much for your time. Uh, Professor Christy Van der Westeisen is Associate Professor at uh, the Center for the Advancement of Non-Racialism and Democracy at Nelson Mandela University. And we were just reflecting there on 27 years of democracy in South Africa as a part of her cross-discipline subject matter uh, with special focus on uh, race, this democracy, transformation and uh, such topics. But uh, that's where we're going to park it for now. 